It's a concept framers of the Constitution deemed so important, it's in the fine print. The idea that all artwork at some point becomes public property. Lee Cowan delves into the universe of public domain. For nearly four decades, United Airlines licensed George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue to be its musical identity. In 2020, however, Gershwin's jazzy classical classic fell out of the friendly skies and landed in the public domain. What does that mean? What it means is that the copyright expires. Anyone is free to use and build upon that work. With no fees, no licensing. No fees, no, no licenses, no, no tracking permission. down the person who owns it, no permission. Jennifer Jenkins, director of the Center for the Study of the Public Domain at Duke University Law School, says there are a lot of famous works that don't belong to their creators anymore. Peter Pan! Characters like Peter Pan. Over there, Tink. Dracula. Indeed. <laughs> and Frankenstein. It's alive, it's alive, it's alive. They're all now owned by us, the public, free for anyone to use to create something fresh. The public domain doesn't represent the death of copyright. It's just the second part of copyright's life cycle. The concept of putting an expiration date on intellectual property was something the founding fathers actually put in the U.S. Constitution to promote the progress of science and the useful arts. They left it to Congress, however, to decide just how long the copyright term should last. If copyright lasted forever, it would be very difficult for a lot of creators to make the works they want to make without worrying about being in the crosshairs of a copyright lawsuit. F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby was published in 1925. Anyone who wanted to use elements from the novel, whether it be Robert Redford... How do you do, old sport? I'm Gatsby. ...or Leonardo DiCaprio... I'm Gatsby. Had to get permission from the Fitzgerald estate, which held the copyright for 95 years. That's a really long time. It right? is a long time, yeah. Do you think it's too long? I don't think it's too long. And then that's my personal opinion, and I'm obviously biased. Blake Hazard is F. Scott Fitzgerald's great granddaughter, and she's a trustee of his estate. When Gatsby finally entered the public domain back in 2021, she watched as a slew of Gatsby esque projects we're waiting at the starting line. I always hope there'll be some faithfulness, but we don't have any control over it. You have nothing so we now, just right? kind of Exactly. So we just have to kind of embrace that. Only we know what we She's just been invited to a new post-copyright adaptation of her great-grandfather's work, a Gatsby musical, which opens on Broadway this month. I hope it's good. <laughs> she comes in first, and, and then, then he, he comes in, and then like, he's like, Dang. Do you want to try that? Should we try it? Any group of artists is going to distill down a story through their own lens. Bigger as in just, just, more pointed, just or bigger as in pointed. louder? The musical's director, Mark Bruni, and writer, Kate Kerrigan. We didn't want to do something that was wildly different from the novel. We wanted to add perspective and layers to the novel. And when you think the party stops, the truth is, most works aren't lucky enough to be economically viable for as long as F. Scott Fitzgerald's or Ernest Hemingway's or even Walt Disney's. This year, Steamboat Willie entered the public domain. <laughs> <laughs> it unleashed two of the most lucrative rodents in history. To be clear, though, don't go using this Mickey or that Minnie because they're still under copyright. It's only the big-eared couple as they first appeared that's fair game. Still, as soon as those first copyrights expired, we got this. A Mickey slasher film. We need to go. There's... The same thing happened when A.A. A. Milne's Winnie the Pooh entered the public domain. It's that kind of reimagination that many estates fear. What do you mean, Holmes? Don't you see, my dear Watson? Sherlock Holmes is one of the most recognized literary characters from the 19th century. But Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's estate began to see its copyrights expire in the 1980s. Mr. Holmes, apologies for summoning you like this. Nevertheless, the Conan Doyle estate kept seeking licensing fees 
arguing that since some of the later Sherlock Holmes stories were still under copyright, they should own the rights to all the characters still. But at some point, enough is enough. In 2013, author Les Klinger, one of the leading scholars on Sherlock Holmes, was about to publish this adaptation of the supposedly copyright-free detective when this happened. The estate contacted that publisher and said, you need a license. And we said to the publisher, no, you don't. We just thought it was wrong, absolutely wrong, and it made us very angry. So Klinger filed a civil suit in federal court, and he won. They didn't give up easily. They were trying to squeeze all the juice out of these lemons that they could right up until they've run out of copyright. Copyright gives rights to creators and their descendants that provide incentives to create. But the public domain really is the soil for future creativity. There are surely more copyright clashes ahead, yeah. though. So we got a long way, huh? A little bit of a way, yeah. Characters like Bugs Bunny. What's up, Doc? Superman and I'm Batman will all find themselves out of copyright protection soon enough. Even Luke Skywalker will eventually find himself in the public domain too. Sometime around 2073, that sure seems like a galaxy far, far away.